What's up legends, excited here today to be talking to you about blockchain indexing going from zero to hero and we've got a bunch of different sections. This is going to be a really cool guide if you're coming in and you want to understand why do I need to index, how do I even go about doing it and, and what on earth is it. So yeah, this is going to be a really nice course. Uh, today we're going to go through the basics, things like what is indexing, why do we need it, it's going to be quick, it's going to be informative, and I want to stress it's going to be a learn by doing, especially after this video. We want to make sure that everything that's going on here you can do. There's going to be examples in GitHub, and it's going to be a really, really nice way to actually practically get going with indexing. So just a couple of the things to look forward to, and this is super subject to change. Um, a bunch of these are already recorded and it's really nice and exciting but essentially besides going through the basics we're also going to be looking at actually setting up your first index acquiring data making your index a multi-chain uh, deploying your indexer indexing dynamic contracts essentially if someone comes to you after this and says hey will you go ahead and index all the Uniswap swap pools on base and find the meme coins with the most trading volume? That should be a question that you're able to answer by setting up an index and getting all of that data. Epic. So without further ado, I mean, let's kick off and let's start talking about what is the problem and why does every blockchain application need an index? And to be clear, indexing is quite a broad term. So let's kind of start with what is blockchain indexing. And if we had to say it super simply, blockchain indexing is a process to make data that is stored on the blockchain more accessible and searchable, right? So I'll say that again. It's this process to make blockchain data more accessible and searchable. And why isn't blockchain data currently accessible and searchable? So you see this amazing diagram is a bunch of different nodes in the network and each node in a blockchain network generally has its own copy of all the data pertaining to that blockchain and it and it facilitates this consensus process right so we'll get more into these different nodes and and how they make sense but the way they store the data is for the idea of creating consensus they don't store the data to specifically actually satisfy the use case of accessibility and searchability they store the data to satisfy the use case of actually adding new blocks to the chain. So if we go ahead to a block explorer, something like Etherscan, you can see there's more than 19 million blocks. And if we click on any random block, what you'll see, it's got 121 transactions. And if we click on all these transactions, there's a bunch of things. There's something going to scroll. There's a Uniswap transaction. There's a a blur NFT transaction. There's something to do with the OX exchange. There's wrapped ether. There's Mobi token. So there's no real uh, logical ordering of all of these transactions from the sense of an application, right? We're not going to be able to see all of the the transactions that are relating necessarily to Retrobridge. And that's just the way the blockchain is designed. It's this append only ledger, and new blocks are being added every couple of seconds and in order to get the data in a more accessible and searchable manner we need to index it and what i mean by that is let's say you are one of these applications like pendle and, and you only care about all of the data related to pendle um, blockchain indexing allows you to go ahead and, and get all of the data essentially related to Pendle to make it more accessible and searchable. So if we go back over here and we have a little scroll down, you can see it's millions and millions of blocks with all of these blockchains and finding data can be a bit like finding a needle in a haystack, right? Um, as I said, if we're looking at uh, this Pendle V3 router and we want to find all of the transactions related to Pendle, there's some in this block, which is block 19,581,326. But 
who knows where all the other pendle related transactions are so in essence that's what blockchain indexing does it finds specific pieces of information within this blockchain um, and it essentially then allows you to transform those and extract them and put them into a simple database so that you can uh, get the information that you care about on demand where you need it and yeah again just one of the issues with blockchain indexing is it can be very time consuming and costly to actually find transform and store the data that you care about when you blockchain indexing um, so that's essentially something we're going to look uh, look a little bit at but just to give you an example again of exactly what's happening here um, most people are deploying these smart contracts to blockchains right this is just remix ethereum it's an online id showing like what a random smart contract essentially looks like this erc20 contract this is actually what a token contract looks like you'll probably heard of uh, many of your favorite meme coins and essentially when users interact with these contracts on the blockchain for example there might be a, a transfer function you call where you're sending a hundred uh, Joe Bowden tokens to your friend or whatever it might be um, you're actually calling this function and this ends up being a transaction that's included on the blockchain and when you call this function I'll go to this underscore transfer what's actually happening is you'll see that uh, an event is being emitted so we can see there's this emit transfer event with a from to and a value and if we want to look at what this transfer event looks like a bit more over here it's going to be an address from an address to and some value and you call that function and this event is emitted and generally in indexing you'll listen to these events so that you'll be able to essentially know every time this token has been transferred and that information might be very very useful to you what does it look like on the block explorer well if we say go to uh, this pendle router contract and we click on the events you can see all of the events that are happening and being emitted from this pendle router contract right now this looks like this doesn't make too much sense to us what is all of this stuff so uh, indexing is going to help us make sense of all of that you can see here's the long list of transactions in pendle right so where have we got up to essentially we've started off with what is blockchain indexing it's this process to make the data stored on a blockchain more accessible and searchable because currently all the data stored on a blockchain is in this append only fashion added block by block because that's how blockchains work um, and indexing allows you to comb through all of those blocks and essentially save the version um, of data that you care about so here's all 18 million blocks in ethereum you typically listen to all of the events we've looked at what the events might be from a smart contract that are emitted and essentially you listen to those events and when you get those events you could run some logic so say you want to keep track of uh, the number of transfers of a specific token what the volume is uh, every time you receive one of these events and they are emitted you could run some logic and then you save that into a database so that um, either maybe when a user comes to your application on the front end you're able to serve them that data and show them while wow, uh, you as a user have made 43 transfers of this token totaling uh, 1 million units or whatever it might be that's essentially how, how typical indexing works and um, yeah we've covered all the basics there and essentially what you're doing and generally what you do is to get these events you listen from something called the JSON RPC now we're not going to be doing that and I'll get into that in terms of efficiency but remember all of these uh, nodes on the network they each have a copy of all the blockchain data if it's an archive node and you might be familiar with terms like 
Geth and uh, Reth, etc. These are names of uh, types of nodes written in different software that essentially run the network. Um, it's an oversimplification. But they each have a copy of the data. So what you're doing is uh, you are making a request to one of these nodes and that's essentially what an RPC provider is. They have a bunch of these nodes and they're letting you make requests to one of their nodes to get some data and you requesting over say a certain block range with a method like give me all the the logs and you are requesting information and that is what this uh, listening from JSON RPC is you making a request to one of those nodes um, and if you get some of the data back that you are looking for, then you might run some logic, as I said, to uh, transform some of that data and save it into a database. Right, so there it is. That is essentially what's happening going with indexing. Um, now, what an issue with indexing is, is we have all of these chains with millions and millions of blocks, and often there's lots of data you, you wanna get and you wanna care about, and you write some of your code to specifically handle the data when you get it. And um, it can be a very long and cumbersome process to scan through these millions and millions of blocks and make requests with something like the JSON RPC to actually get the data you care about. So much so that um, if you are indexing a typical contract, like uh, one of the Uniswap contracts, it's one of the most popular exchanges uh, where you swap between various uh, tokens on the blockchain it's got millions and millions of events um, then it becomes very very slow it can sometimes take weeks to go through the entire blockchain um, search get all of the events transform them and put them in a database and that's just for one chain and now you're doing it for multiple chains so we're also going to look at how you tackle this in a much more efficient manner which is really really exciting um, and we're going to get into it writing some actual code and doing some indexing so yeah again blockchain indexing it's it's important on many levels basically if you care about any of the data that's held on chain here which is a lot of people whether you're doing data whether you're doing analytics whether you're doing your own indexer and explorer you're building an application Many people are interested in this data and the form in just which it's uh, it's presented and stored by nature being added block by block uh, is not in the a super logical organization for most use cases for specific applications, etc. So you'll want to transform and store the data in your own way to make it a lot more searchable, accessible, essentially for your specific application. So there we go uh, that's a little bit about it and i'll leave this one here and we'll get into some actual indexing now in the next video